adjustment for intercompany balances and transactions. Uh, the intercompany referring to the transaction between the parent and the subsidiary. Between the parent and the subsidiary. So either parent uh, sold uh, give loans. Yeah, for example, here you can see loans. Parent give loans to the subsidiary, or the subsidiary may give loans to the parent. So remember, when we prepare, when uh, in the business combination, they have to prepare as a single entity. All right, the parent and the subsidiary as a single entity, they have to prepare this consolidated financial statement. So if you look at the from the point of view as a business combination as a single entity, when a parent actually give money to S, the subsidiary, or subsidiary gives money to parent. So the total money that is actually from the point of view of the group or the business combination, there is no reduction or there is no increase or decrease of the amount of cash. Even though it may seem as a decrease in the amount of cash in P, but it's actually an increase in the amount of S. So when they combine together, the amount is actually still there. So this transaction, either loans or current accounts or account receivables, for example, if P so goods to S, it resulted uh, goes uh, so goods are uh, in credit uh, to S or S actually so goods uh, to the parent on credit so that we resulted in account receivables so that account receivable is actually from the point of view of group uh, is simply uh, receivable from the point of view of the parent and also from the uh, the point of view of S is uh, payables right so we have here account receivables and account payables uh, bills payables and bills receivables and also items in transit items in transit P let's say parent uh, sold goods to a subsidiary so the goods already left the premise of P but still not rich huh, as premise so therefore for that item we call as a goods in transit or you may have cash in transit. All right, so all this intercompany transaction is to remember the steps in preparing the consolidated financial statement. So we have to adjust, we have to eliminate the intercompany transaction. All right, now let's look at the uh, examples of the intercompany balances and transactions that need to be adjusted so we have here items in transit either in cash or other asset either in terms of inventory the goods that is remitted by one party but not received by another party at the asset of date the receivables the payables the current accounts loan all right, so here we talk about the loan or the current account. So what you have to do if you have this loan or current account, you need to cancel off the current account in the parent and the subsidiary account. The difference would be cash in transit. You cancel off the amount first and then the difference you will record it as a cash in transit. And then if I say for the account receivable and payable also need to be canceled off. However, and then you may have right, the cash uh, in transit also here and then for the bills payable and bill receivable you need to cancel the undiscounted amount so how do you do all this adjustment for this intercompany balances let's look at the example here so given uh, the statement of financial position as of 31st december 2021 between the h is the parent and the S is the subsidiary. Okay, so given a statement of financial position of H and it's 80% subsidiary of S as at 31st December 2021. So you can know that. So if H acquire 80% control of S, so means that NCI will be 20%. Okay, so here are the additional information. Here are the additional information. So you have in the first one, he should quite 160,000 of the 200,000 issue or shares of S on 1st January 2021 when the retained profit of S was 30,000. Okay, so here, that's why we got 160 out of 200. You have this 80%. Okay, so now for number 2, number 3, number 4, and number 5, is based, number 2, number 3, and 4, these are basically the transaction on the intercompany balances. Number 5, 
talk about the non-controlling interest is measured based on the proportion of the fair value of net asset. In previous notes, we have discussed on the determination of the goodwill and bargain purchase. So you have to uh, calculate the non-controlling interest using this method based on proportion of the fair value of the net asset. So the requirement here, prepare consolidated statement of financial position. So what are we going to do? So what will be the first step? First, you calculate the goodwill and bargain purchase. Eh, remember step one until step four and then uh, you eliminate the intercompany balances and the third one you prepare the schedule of consolidated statement of financial position all right so these are the sofp of the parent and the subsidiary so let's look at the first step which is calculating the goodwill and the bargain purchase all right so the first one and of course look at the consideration transfer it is given in the question that mentioned that the the uh, H the parent eh, actually paid a uh, two hundred thousand of uh, the consideration transferred, all right, and then here so you can see investment ordinary shares of asset cost two hundred thousand. So this is the amount, all right. So two hundred thousand consideration transferred. So remember second step, calculate the fair value of the net asset. So in the question, so you can see the ordinary shares and the retained profit on the date of acquisition is 30,000. So the total is 230,000. So remember, you proportion or based on the fair value of the net asset. So 20% from 230,000, you got 246,000. All right, therefore, the total is 246,000. Compare with the fair value of net asset. 230,000 you have a goodwill of 16,000 so that will be the first step calculate the goodwill or the bargain purchase remember in order for you to calculate goodwill or bargain purchase you compare the concentration transferred plus the proportion of the NCI and minus the fair value of net asset if it's more and eh, the concentration transfer is more than the fair value of net asset you have goodwill or not if you have a bargain purchase all right so now how do you do the uh, elimination of the intercompany balances for uh, the trade payable and the trade receivables so we have to look at here look at the uh, additional information number two all right so let's look at it by one by one so trade receivable of h include twenty thousand due from s so trade receivable of h if you look at the statement of financial position here so H has 40,000 of trade receivable. So they mentioned that the trade receivable of H include 20,000 due from S, which is from the subsidiary. This includes amount due for inventory costing 5,000 sent by H to S on 31st December, but received by S on 10 January 2022, which is after the end. That's why it is actually inventory in transit. So, you can see how do you do the adjustment for that. Remember, any intercompany transaction has to be eliminated, has to be adjusted. So, 20,000, you can see. So, amount here, minus from H, 20,000. That's why you credit the trade receivable of H, 20,000. And then you debit 15,000. Why? Because inventory is still in transit. Eh? 5,000. So therefore, that's why you debit the trade payable. Reduce the trade payable of S. Because the trade receivable from the point of view of H, but from the point of view of S, that is actually a trade payable. Therefore, when we eliminate the intercompany transaction, so reduce the receivable of H, and then you also reduce the payable of S. It will be vice versa. For example, here it is mentioned trade receivable of H include 20,000 due from S, but it may be in a different question trade receivable of S include 20,000 due from H. So it's actually based on how do you look at the transaction. But the adjustment is the same. Either it is trade receivable of H or trade receivable of S, that is still intercompany transaction that you need to eliminate. So this is how you eliminate, you reduce the trade receivable of H and also the trade payable of, of, of S. So if you look at the statement of financial position, how do you do this? So let's look at here. The first journal entry, you can see this is the first transaction 
So what you actually reduce, so you can see trade payable of S here. You can follow the arrow. So you can see the trade payable. Remember, item by item, when you prepare the consolidated financial statement, you simply total up and you combine the statement of financial position of H plus S. So you can see that 30,000 plus 40,000 is from the original question. So you have 30,000 here plus 40,000. So all basically you add on, right? So of course, uh, this one, these two will have a different calculation, right? So for asset and liability, so basically you will add on and then you will adjust for all this intercompany transaction or other adjustments. So from here, 30 plus 40,000. But you can see after you have done this adjustment for intercompany transaction for this trade payable, uh, trade receivable of H, Alright, so you adjust 15,000, you minus here, minus 15,000. And from the point of view of H, it is a receivable. Again, the same thing happens. This 20,000, you follow the arrow here. So 40 plus 15, this is from the statement of financial position, minus the 20,000 here. Because this is the amount that is actually due from S which is the intercompany transaction. And then since 5,000, it is mentioned that this is actually in transit. So you can see it will appear as, as in inventory. Sorry, this one will appear as here adjusted in the inventory because it's still not yet received by S. So you can see 60 plus 30 plus 5, okay, on the uh, transaction here, adjusted with that. So you add back the inventory that is in transit in the uh, financial statement of, of H, all right? Okay, so that will be the first adjustment. The second adjustment, so we look at here, bills payable of S of 25,000 were drawn in favor of H. H had discounted 10,000 of these bills. Remember, if you have bills payable and be receivable, you cancel the undiscounted amount. So if, again, the same thing with receivable just now, so bills payable of S. Bills payable of S is basically bills receivables to, to H. Okay, from the point of view of H is based receivables. So remember, you need to minus the undiscounted amount. So since here they mentioned discounted is 10,000, means the undiscounted will be 15,000. So how do you adjust for that? So simply debit bills payable 15,000, credit the bills receivable of H of 15,000. All right. And then if you look at the um how it is presented in the financial statement as you can see and the arrow follow the arrow for this 15000 and so for the bills payables and the bills uh, receivables okay bills payables and the bills receivable all right so for the third transaction s had remitted 10000 on account of the loan from h h received the remittance only on 2nd january Okay, um, so here the loan uh, from H and uh, from uh, uh, S remitted 10,000 account of the loan from H. So you can see how do you adjust for that. So number three here, loan from H. So from the question, so you can see 30,000 here. Loan to S is 47,000. Clearly the difference is actually 10,000. And... They said that S already remitted that, uh, but it still has not been received by H. So what happens? First and foremost, you eliminate the amount. So from the account, from the SOFP, totally eliminate everything. So 37,000 from H here, 37,000. And then from S is 47,000. The difference is what we call as cash in transit so how do you record that in the sofp so you can follow the arrow for this loan uh, from h and also loan to s the difference is what we call as cash in transit here okay so right remember eh, so you have to eliminate all the intercompany 
the balances. So after you have done the adjustment, eh, I eliminate the intercompany balances here. So of course, uh, prepare the schedule because you want to calculate the group retained profit and the NCI. Okay, so remember to refer the to previous lecture on this one on the preparing the schedule. So for this question, all right. So the date of acquisition. So you have the uh, non-controlling interest of the forty-six thousand. So this is from the previous calculation of your goodwill and the bargain purchase here forty-six thousand. Let's transfer to this uh, schedule. All right, and then for the return profit of S, so you have that 65,000 minus the pre-acquisition. 65,000, of course, you look at from the from the SOFP here, 65,000. So this is the pre-acquisition, 30,000. So you minus that, got 35,000. So of course, based on the controlling interest, 80% is acquired by H, non-controlling interest of of 20 percent so you calculate that apportion that according to the controlling interest and then for retained profit of h everything goes to the group retained profit because this is the parent and the, the group all right so then of course the total is when you total up everything so 158,000. so this will be transferred to the consolidated financial statement and also here the nci will be transferred to the consolidated financial statement so 158,000 and 53,000. so you can see this here all right from the schedule so include that in the amount and eh, in the statement closer to statement of financial position and of course with all the adjustment you will have your consolidated financial statements so remember the steps to do the preparing the financial statements so line by line item you add on everything and then you will do the adjustment eh, for intercompany inter transaction here all right okay so that is on the intercompany balances.